In this video we're going to be looking at deflection. When we play a shot with side spin, the cue pushes the cue ball off the original shot line and this is called deflection. As with many things in pool, there are lots of factors at work when determining how much deflection you'll get on the cue ball. One of those factors is the cue and everyone's cue is different. I can obviously only show you here the deflection that I get with my cue, so you'll need to try these things out for yourself and try and determine how much deflection you get with your own cue. For the purpose of demonstration, we're going to look at the deflection when playing a dead straight shot with lots of side spin. Now, this is not something we're ever likely to do in a game because unless the cue ball hits a cushion after the shot, then there's little point in using side spin. You're just going to end up with a cue ball spinning in the middle of the table. However, the straight shot makes it very easy to see if things are going offline, so it's perfect for demonstrating what's going on in these examples. When we play with side spin, there are two things that happen to the balls. The first is deflection, which as I've said is when the cue ball is pushed off the shot line by contacting the side of the ball. The second thing is spin induced throw on the object ball. Because the cue ball is spinning when it contacts the object ball, that spin throws the object ball to the side just a little. Both deflection and spin induced throw are affected by the pace of the shot. So let's have a look at some examples to see what happens. If we play the shot fairly softly with lots of right hand side, the deflection is quite small. Because we're striking to the right of the ball, it deflects just a little to the left. When the cue ball contacts the object ball, the spin induced throw throws the object ball to the left a little. The end result of this is that it actually looks as though we've played a dead straight shot with the object ball going straight into the heart of the pocket when in fact the cue ball struck the object ball slightly to the left. We can see this by the fact that the cue ball ends up to the left hand side of the shot line. So when we play with left hand side at a soft pace, the cue ball deflects slightly to the right, meaning that the object ball should go slightly to the left. But then the spin induced throw throws the object ball to the right, keeping it in the heart of the pocket. When we play the shot firmly, it has opposing effects on deflection and spin induced throw. The firm pace increases the deflection, but reduces the spin induced throw. If we look at this example of lots of right hand side played firmly, you can clearly see the cue ball being deflected out to the left. However, the spin induced throw at this fast pace is so minimal, it's not enough to straighten the object ball, and we end up missing the shot to the right of the pocket. Now, I notice when making these videos that I seem to be able to impart more right hand side on the cue ball than I can left hand side. Watching these videos closely, I can see that I strike the cue ball far wider to the right than I do to the left. This is something that I need to work on and is probably due to me being right eye dominant. Visually, it probably looks to me as though my cue is as wide left as I can go when in fact it's not. Anyway, as a result, you can see that when I play this firm shot with left hand side, I still make the pot. Although you can still see that the cue ball deflects to the right and the object ball strikes the left jaw of the pocket. So we've seen that the pace has an effect. So what about the distance between the balls? When we play the shot softly with the right hand side, but with the cue ball further away from the object ball, it makes little difference. The cue ball is still deflected very fractionally to the left and the spin induced throw is enough to keep the object ball straight into the pocket. However, when we play the shot firmly from further away, the deflection becomes even more pronounced. The cue ball is deflected almost half a ball's width to the left, and the result is that the object ball misses the pocket several inches to the right. And with left hand side, the cue ball deflects to the right, so we miss the pot to the left of the pocket. If we try to come back even further with the cue ball, then something else comes into play which changes things still further. In all of the shots so far, I've been able to get my bridge hand on the table and keep the cue as parallel as possible to the table. However, when the cue ball is near the cushion, we have no choice but to raise the butt of the cue in the air a little. This means that we're then playing down onto the cue ball. 
When we play down onto the cue ball, it makes it jump a little, so that it's not in contact with the cloth. When the cue ball comes back into contact, then any spin on the ball will take hold, and the result of this is a swerve shot. This completely changes what happens when we play the shot softly. If we play with lots of right hand side, but with the cue raised up, the cue ball jumps into the air a little and deflects out to the left. As soon as the cue ball comes back into contact with the table, the right hand spin then pulls the cue ball back to the right, creating an arc. The result of this is that we then miss the object ball entirely to the right hand side. If we look at the same thing with left hand side, the cue ball jumps and deflects to the right and then the spin arcs the ball back across so that we miss the object ball on the left hand side. If we play to the same side but firmly, with the cue raised, then the ball travels much further in the air before the spin kicks in. This means that the spin doesn't have long enough to pull the ball back across, so it still makes contact to the right of the object ball. As you can see, raising the butt of the cue has a dramatic effect, and I'll cover swerve shots in more detail in another video. So if you're using side, then it's better to do it when you can cue level, so that you avoid adding even more factors into consideration. So if we go back to the previous example where we can cue level, we know that if we play the shot firmly with right hand side, we will miss a few inches to the right of the pocket. So to be able to make this pot, we need to compensate for that deflection. If we know that we will miss, say, three inches to the right of the pocket, then we simply line up the shot as if we want to miss three inches to the left of the pocket. This gives us a ghost ball here to the right of the object ball. Then when we play the shot, the cue ball is deflected to the left, meaning it ends up striking the object ball dead straight and into the pocket. Playing with left hand side, we simply reverse it. Again, we know that if we play fairly firmly with lots of left, we miss the pot to the left of the pocket. So we line up the shot as if we want to miss to the right of the pocket. The cue ball is deflected to the right and again ends up striking the object ball straight and into the pocket. Obviously all of these examples are using extremes of side and pace. So if you're playing with less side or a medium pace, then you need to adjust things accordingly. Practice playing these straight shots with varying amounts of spin and pace and try and get a feel for how much deflection you get on the cue ball. Once you have a feel for the amount of deflection, then you can adjust your aim to compensate by the same amount. If you want to see more practice routines and pull tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.